Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you yes. for joining us. Yes. We're having a yes. good time. Um, if you weren't able to watch the previous episode, go back yes. and watch the previous episode because we're just saying things. And, and you know, we take a, in filming, we have a studio audience here. And so after I preach, we kind, we, we kind of sit and re-preach. Yeah. And we have mini sermons and, and going on by behind the scenes here. We were talking about uh, yesterday, what we talk, started on was talking about addressing this wonderful truth of, of faith in the life of the yes. believer because it's a foundational truth. If foundational things are not in place, uh, the building is compromised. Yes. Well, if, if, and faith is a foundational truth in the life of a believer. We can't conduct business with heaven without it. Yes. Yes. Amen. The currency of heaven is faith. It's faith. Uh, if you go into a store and you say, I want to buy that, and they say, okay, it's such and such amount of money. Well, I want that, but I don't have the money. Well, then you need to come back when you got the money. <laughs> right? They don't just hand it over to you because you want it. <laughs> there has to be an exchange to take place. You want this, you give us this. <laughs> and if you don't give us this, you don't get this. And so it's the same thing. Heaven has a currency and it's called faith. Yes. And it's not enough to say, I want something. We have to bring our currency. Yes. Amen. And uh, faith is our currency. Yes. And the thing is, is that when we conduct business with heaven by faith, it affects the business on the earth. That when our faith purchases something Come on, yeah. in the sense of it lays hold of us, yeah. I, 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 that's a wrong statement, not faith purchasing something. Jesus purchased it, yeah. but our faith lays hold oh, yeah. of what was purchased. Yeah. Yeah. That will show up in this realm. Yeah. So basically you can lay hold of these of things in this realm without money right. when you have heaven's currency. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because heaven will move and get things into your hands bypassing yeah. natural currency, yeah. Yeah. American yeah. currency or the currency yeah. of your country. Yeah. Because when, once heaven's, uh, once the currency of heaven yeah. is met, uh -huh. yeah. heaven gets involved. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, glory. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That means you can have things that you don't, you can't pay for naturally. <laughs> if heaven's currency is satisfied, yes. it'll show up out here. Yes. So don't decide that money, don't let money dismiss you from having what you want because faith includes you. Amen. So you can have it. We were talking about, I was talking yesterday because I, we, we didn't get very far. <laughs> I, I got like halfway down on one page. We didn't, we didn't get very far, but these things are, are fun and, 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 and needful yes. to, right. to talk about. And we were talking about without a proper foundation in your life, that determines how high, just naturally in building a building, the foundation determines how high the building goes. And if something of the foundation is lacking, compromised, even what's built on it is not supported. Yeah. And, and when's it going to fall? At a time of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. When something pushes on it, yes. whether it's a storm, 
the weather, you know, you can have hurricanes, you can have all kinds of things yes. that will come. Yes. If a foundation is really supported, uh, there's no, there's no, there's no fear. There's no room for doubt in the face of a storm because that's, that foundation is so certain. It's so sure. It's so secure. But if something's compromised in the foundation, ah, when a storm comes, it's, it's, it can look risky. <laughs> and um, I was talking about the home that God gave me, Sister Amy Sim McPherson's. It was her vacation home. And uh, several years ago, God gave that to me. I was able to buy it. It wasn't for sale initially, but they ended up mm -hmm. selling it to me. And um, one of the things that I called out, because God told me he was going to give me the home. And so before I bought the home, I had an inspector to come out, not because I was going to see if I was going to buy it. I knew I was going to buy it. I just wanted to know what I was going to have to address yes. once I bought it. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, he said to me, he said, Pastor Nancy, he said, somebody put a whole new foundation mm -hmm. under this. Mm -hmm. It was originally a rock and mortar foundation, mm -hmm. you know, just rock and, con you know, yeah. mortared together. And uh, it's, it's coming up on, it's uh, almost 100 years old now. Yeah. And so... Um, and so they said somebody went in and pulled out a section like this wide mm -hmm. at a time and poured concrete, then went to the next section. Mm -hmm. So he said uh, they, they put a lot of money in that foundation. Mm -hmm. But uh, even so, there were other foundational things with the home mm -hmm. that needed to be addressed. Septic, sewage, yeah. you know, all of these things, electrical, all yeah. these things. And I was telling the studio audience in the break, I was saying, um, God told me I want you to pay cash mm -hmm. for it. I had originally thought I'm going to uh, finance the purchase yeah. and then take my cash and renovate it. But God said, no. <laughs> he said, I want you to pay cash. Well, it dawned on me later. <laughs> Why? One of the reasons. The primary reason is because that's the highest flow and he wants me in the highest flow. Yes. Yes. You know, and we, we just keep using our faith until we reach that highest flow. You know, uh, it doesn't mean you can't have it. It just means keep growing your faith, yes. keep feeding your faith, keep being a doer with your faith. Um, but naturally speaking, a bank, if you go in for a loan, they, they, they demand a thorough inspection True. of a home, a business, any building before they will even put their money to it. Why? Because if foundational things are lacking, they know they'll lose their money. Right, right. There. Yeah. yeah. They know that that structure will not stand up over time. Something is going to be compromised to make it an unusable structure yes. over time. Yes. And a, a bank mm -hmm. won't even part with any of their money until foundation things uh -huh. are, are secured, uh -huh. yeah. in place, right. fortified, and healthy. Yes. Well, there were things in that home that would not have passed that kind of inspection, which I'm doing, I'm renovating now, so it will pass. Uh -huh. right. uh, it functioned, but not at optimum, right. not at optimum. Well, same thing with our spiritual lives, our faith life. We want our faith operating at optimum, yes. not hindered, not held back, right. because at a time of emergency, we need it. We need our faith ever ready. At a moment's yeah. notice, it's ready. Uh, faith, the God kind of faith, mm -hmm. always gets results. Yeah. Always. 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 Uh -huh. always. There's no such thing as a faith failure. Uh -huh. yes. There's no such thing. Yes. Because faith and failure are opposite. Yes. If there's failure, it's because something was missing in the faith. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Um, Paul made the statement. He said, he talked about, he says, I, I long to see you. Mm -hmm. I want to come and minister to you that he said that I might make up what's lacking yeah. in yes. your faith. Yes. And so if, if we're not getting the result the word says belongs to us, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, it doesn't mean give up. It means go back and have an inspection on the foundation. Yeah. Yes. That faith foundation, go back and have an inspection on it. Yes. Is there something compromising it? Unforgiveness, mm -hmm. offense, bitterness, fear, yeah. worry. Yeah. All of these things that break down the foundation of faith. Um, it doesn't mean we can't have it. It just means we have to pay attention. Yes. 
to our foundation so that we can have a faith that gets results every time. We have to not be okay with not receiving. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 If we pray and release our faith and we don't receive, we we shouldn't say, well, you know, well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. No, no, no. No. We cannot become okay with not receiving Mm. what's already been provided for us. And if we don't receive something we're praying about, Uh or releasing our faith for, Mm -hmm. it's not on God's part. It's not because he's failing. Uh It's because we have now the divine privilege Uh (laughs) of addressing our faith foundation. What may be lacking. Sometimes we, sometimes we slipped into worry and didn't even realize we'd slipped into worry. It's so easy for, it's easy to slip back into the natural because it's the natural thing to do. Yes, yes. So we have to make sure we're not okay Mm -hmm. with not receiving. That's right. Faith always receives. Every time, every time, every time faith is released, power flows. Every time. Why? Because power meets faith. So if something isn't being received, let's go back and let's have an inspection. Not to condemn ourselves, yes. not to accuse ourselves. Yeah. Do not join the ranks of the devil who is the accuser of the brethren. Don't join his army. Don't join his troops in the sense of you start self-accusing. We inspect. The, the Bible says examine to see whether you're in the faith. You can have faith and not be in it. You say, Pastor Nancy, how can you have faith and not be in it? Same way you can have a car and not be in it. Same way you can have a house and not be in it. You can have faith and not be in it. And many times it's just the little things that we're doing that's keeping us from receiving what faith will receive from God. And so that's one of the most important things is that we don't become okay with not receiving what belongs to us. Amen. Amen. Don't get used to that. I I, I so appreciate something that Dad Hagen said years ago. Now, Dad Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen was a spiritual father to my husband and I for decades until he went home to be with the Lord in 2003. But um, he he would make this statement. He said, since I learned how to pray based on the word, he says, I've never had one prayer unanswered. Now, see... That to us sounds astounding, but to heaven it sounds astounding that we're okay with an answer oh, prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Because heaven purchased yeah. Yeah. everything we ever need. Yeah. That's right. We're, se- we're raised and seated with Christ uh-huh. in heavenly places. And heaven gets amazed yeah. that yes. we would be okay with not receiving. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So we shouldn't be amazed when we hear somebody say, since I've learned how to pray. Because see, uh, that, that's the key. Since I've learned how to pray. Yes. He says, I've never had one prayer unanswered. Then he, he, he tagged on this. He says, that means if I wasn't receiving, I had to go back and correct something. I had to go back and correct maybe a way of thinking, a way of believing, a way of speaking, a way that I was praying. But he said yeah. something needed to change on my part if I wasn't receiving. So basically, he did not get into a bad spiritual habit of if it works good, if it doesn't, well, maybe next time. That's a bad spiritual habit. We're to have a faith that receives every time. Amen. Now, sometimes we release our faith and for us... We, we can always receive for us. Our faith, we can't always get it to work for someone else. Now, our faith for them will work, but they may not cooperate on their side with what our faith was laying hold of. Because God will not allow our faith to trump someone else's desires. Someone else's will. You can't take your faith and make people do things. 
I'm talking, so we'll not even go into that because that's going to be a whole nother series. <laughs> but I'm just talking about for us, our personal life, when Brother Hagen was making that statement, he wasn't talking about other people always uh -huh. because yes. other people, they have to, they have a part to play. Yeah. And so we can release faith on their part. What, we, what our faith can do for someone else is what James says, uh, that we, we're making power available. available. The Amplified yeah. says James yeah. chapter 5 that our faith can make power available for someone else, but our faith can't make someone take what's available. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. They still have to receive and lay hold of and take what our faith makes available, but our faith can always make power available for someone else, and it's up to them whether they take it or not. Yeah. So with, if they don't take it, it's not because my faith didn't work. It's because they didn't take yes. it. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, but there, there again, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> But there again, when it comes to our own life, mm -hmm. yes. we can always receive. Always. Always, always. always receive. Yes. Yes. Now, it, if we look in Jude, Jude is only one chapter, and I want us to look at verse 3. Jude and verse 3. Um, it reads, Beloved, when I gave all diligence uh, to write unto you the common salvation. So, he says, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Now, I want you to see the first part of that verse again. It says, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. So he had this idea that he was going to write to them about the common salvation. Right. But then in the course of beginning to write, he said, uh-oh, something else became needful. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God redirected him mm -hmm. and said, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Yeah. He said, I intended to write about this, but the Holy Ghost yeah. redirected. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, it was needful, mm -hmm. needful for me to write unto you. Mm -hmm. Why? Why was it needful for him to write it? Because that's what their need was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What was their need? Exhort them that they should earnestly contend for the faith. Yes. Yes. Look at those words. Earnestly contend mm -hmm. for the faith. Yeah. Look at the next phrase, which was once delivered unto the saints. What's that mean? The original version of faith. Mm -hmm. Not the diluted oh, yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah. Not the watered down yeah. version. Yeah. Not mental faith. Yeah. Head faith, but the spirit of faith. Yeah. Yeah. The original version of yeah. faith. Yeah. That And notice this, that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Now, there's faith in you. Yes. God gives every man the measure of faith, but then how we treat that faith mm -hmm. is going to depend what that faith can accomplish. Oh, right. If we feed that faith, yeah. we act on that faith, that faith will grow robust. Yes. Yes. It'll, grow, it'll grow rich yes. in what it's able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Notice here what he said. He said, earnestly contend for the faith. Look at these words, how active, earnestly yes. contend yes. for the faith. These are not passive words. We can't be passive towards faith and think we're going to arrive at fullness. That's right. Earnestly contend. It shows if someone is earnest about something, mm -hmm. they're interested in it. Yes. Yes. Amen. If you're earnest about that new home, mm -hmm. you're earnest about getting a job, right. you're, that's going to show your level of interest right. is shown in that. Yes. Yes. If people aren't earnest, they're not interested. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can be slightly interested or greatly interested. Uh -huh. Right. Those who are greatly interested lay hold of great things. <laughs> Those who are casually interested or slightly interested, that's the measure of what they'll lay hold of. So earnest, when it says earnestly, earnestly, it's showing, it's talking about an interest level. We need to be interested. We need to be interested that everything Jesus provided, we're laying hold of it. And we're not okay to not receive, to not receive. We're not okay. If we're okay with not receiving what we prayed about or we're releasing our faith for, but for some reason that's not showing up, we can't be okay with that. Go back. Because faith always works. And God always wants us to receive. Always, always, always. But if we're okay with not receiving, that's because our interest level is low. 
We need to be interested. No, I'm not letting go of that request. I'm laying hold of this thing. I'm laying hold of this answer because it belongs to me and I will not dishonor the price Jesus paid so much for me to have it. And for me not to have it, I've got to stir myself up. To, we've got to get rid of this mentality that because something belongs to us, it will, will float into it. Jude says, earnestly contend for the faith. You want, we won't have a faith that is robust floating there, That's right. yeah. Yeah. floating That's into right. it. Yeah. It's, uh-huh. it's a faith that we earnestly contend for. Yes. Yes. Not because we're earnestly contending with, against God, but against opposition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? The devil is interested in your failure. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. He's yeah. interested in your defeat. Uh-huh. Right. And to, to not be robbed from, to not be stolen from, right. we have to be earnestly yes. interested. Yes. Amen. 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 Earnestly contending to get past the devil's opposition yes. in our life. Yes. Yes. That's yes. where the earnest yes. and contending yes. comes in is to get past opposition. Yes. Um, without people being interested, they'll give up. That's true. They'll give up. Absolutely true. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Amen. Um, there, there were four kids in our family, uh, two, two boys, two girls. My oldest brother and I, we were musically inclined. And then my other brother and my other sister were inclined with sports. My, my, my parents were big sports fans. My mother was the biggest sports fan <laughs> in the whole family. She knew all the teams. She knew every, I mean, she was the one that watching the football, the baseball, the basketball. She was a huge sports fan. And when we would go to the basketball games um, of my brother and sister or just any, my mother and my dad would call out, you get in there and you hustle. <laughs> Well, you don't just, if you want to win a game, you don't just casually dribble that basketball down the court. I mean, you got your elbows out because you're going to knock somebody if they get near. They're not taking this ball from me, right? But if you're casual in how you handle the ball, you'll get your team beat. Lack of hustle. My, I, I, can't, I can't tell you the number of times my mother would reprimand whoever was on the court. You're not hustling. <laughs> What's that mean? They weren't that interested enough to put yeah. forth the effort. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is what Judah's saying. Hustle. hustle. Yeah. Put some hustle yeah. in the direction of your faith. Oh, Earnestly good. contend for that. Be interested. Don't be okay with the, the opposing team coming and stealing the ball and you go, oh, well. <laughs> Are you kidding? Right. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, sit yourself down on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what you don't. I don't know why I'm off on sports. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a sports. I'm not a sports expert. <laughs> but I do remember. You know, it brings back all these these thoughts of mother and daddy. And the biggest thing, they did not care so much if our team won or lost. What they cared was, did they hustle? Yes. Yes. If you just got outplayed, that's one thing. You know, somebody, you know, if they were just a better team, but if you didn't put any hustle in it, that's when you're going to get in trouble yeah. when, when you get in the car with us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. right? Yes. Because you gave up what you could have had. Oh. 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 And our, Jude is telling us, don't give up. Don't give, don't up. give up. Yeah. Earnestly oh, contend. And you say, Pastor Nancy, I can look back over my life and I've, I can see places yeah. where I've given up. I can do. I can say that sure. about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Where we quit too soon. Yeah. Yeah. We quit too yeah. soon. Yeah. We, quit too yeah. soon. Yeah. we let go of yeah. things yeah. because the calendar talked us out of That's it. True. Yeah. The yes. clock, yeah. the passing of time. Oh, it's yeah. taking so long. Mm-hmm. Don't take counsel from a clock or a calendar. Oh. Faith Amen. takes its counsel from the Word oh. only, yes. not from the clock. Not from the calendar. You have to learn that Bible faith operates independent of calendars and clocks. It grabs hold and it doesn't let go. It doesn't let go. When a player is on the basketball court, he doesn't doesn't say, 
you can see you can see two players on opposing team. They'll grab hold of the ball, uh-huh. yeah. and they'll both, and then the ref will blow the whistle and say you got to jump for it, yes. you know, yes. because it, it's a tie basically. Ooh. At that point, they don't care that the clock is passing. I'm not let go of the ball. Yeah. Yes. The only thing that lets go that makes me let go of the ball is the ref who's calling another direction. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. But I'm not going to let the clock say, "Oh, I'm, me holding on to this is passing time." No, no, no. I'm gonna hold on to this thing. Yeah. It's the same right. thing with our faith. Yes. Yes. We hold on and we don't let go yes. with what we're believing for. Yes. Yes. And this is earnestly yes. contending. Yes. Right earnestly contending. Look at this. For the faith, it doesn't even say for the need to be met. For the faith yeah. that meets the need. That's right. oh, that's good. We're earnestly contending that's good. for the faith, yeah. meaning I'm keeping every bit of worry off my faith. I'm yeah. keeping doubt yeah. off my faith. I'm yeah. keeping fear off my yes. faith. I'm keeping unforgiveness off yes. my faith. Yes. I'm keeping offense off my faith. Yes. I will not let these, I'm going to earnestly contend uh-huh. for my faith and I'm going to I'm going to back this other junk off. Why? It's a choice. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's a decision. Well, while we've been, while we've been teaching, I can sense that healing anointing come into manifestation. Why is that? Because he's provided it for us. Amen. So I want to pray for those of you who are watching pain, symptoms, sickness, disease in your body. Not only that, any need. The power of God is flowing to meet that need. Satan, I command you, you take your hands off the life of God's people. You take your hand off their bodies. You take your hand off their minds. You take your hands off their family, off their children, off their home, off their finances. You take your hand off God's property in Jesus' name. And right where you're at, say, I receive the power of God. Father, we believe in the power of God. And we speak for that power to flow into their need right now in Jesus' name. We believe in the power that does the work. It's done by God's power, but it's our faith that gives God's power permission to work. So, Father, we receive it. We give your power permission to work unhindered in our life. We receive that power into our need right now. And we call that need met in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are so glad you've joined us. You don't want to miss upcoming episodes because we we just haven't gotten very far. (laughs) But we want to invite you back for next time. And remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Tulsa, Oklahoma at The Rock Church, April 16th through the 20th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught, and that preparation time is never lost time. We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach but a spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end, that you may be established. 
This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not just the book learning. But this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yes. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know, eight years almost. It's it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I build here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have, uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing, if you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, Everything will come together, you just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible School is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play and you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful and you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible School, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself, more than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole, picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that um, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.